Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Meet the 15-inch Lenovo Legion Y740. Pricing on this have been all over the place. If you're a student or in the military, Lenovo does offer healthy discounts. This one here ran about $1,680 and includes the i7 8750H, the RTX 2060. We have dual channel RAM, two 8GB sticks running at 2666. For storage, we have a Samsung NVMe drive, 256GB. Read writes on that come around 3100 and 1700. We also have an empty 2.5 inch bay. If you would like to fill that, this is very simple. Just take your hard drive, the included cable, and assemble just like so. This is very, very easy to do and should take you about five minutes. The network interface card is a killer 1550i on an Intel 9560 chip. We have a 57 watt hour battery, and when running in hybrid graphics mode, expect between two and a half to three hours. And when running in G-Sync mode, expect between two to two and a half hours. The power supply is 230 watts, and it is the largest 230 watt brick I have seen in years. Compared to the Gigabyte brick, not too sure what Lenovo was thinking here. It's not even a whole lot thinner, so packaging this up in your case or bag could be a little bit awkward and add to the overall bulk. Okay, real quick, I need to take aim and fire two shots. One, that power brick is much larger than I feel that it needs to be. Not the end of the world for me, but it perhaps could be a turn off for some of you out there, so do not overlook this. And two, the 57 watt hour battery, this is way too small for the generation that we are currently in. This needs to be 80 watt hour minimum, in my opinion. All right, let's proceed. So here it is, folks, the mullet of laptops. Business in the front, party in the rear. We have an all aluminum build with a plastic area over the fan intake. The I.O. on the left hand side we have a microphone headphone combo jack and a four lane Thunderbolt 3. On the rear we have the mini display port, HDMI 2.0, USB 3.1 Gen 1, a LAN port, a super speed USB 3.1, the proprietary power plug and a lock. I like how Lenovo lights all of this stuff up so when you're standing above the laptop looking for things to plug in you will know where everything goes. On the right hand side we have this pinhole called the Novo button. This enables you to enter Lenovo one key recovery if the PC fails to boot normally. And then next to that is a single USB 3.1. Opening the Y740 with one hand could not be easier. As a matter of fact, perhaps a little too easy could this wear over time. Once inside we have the small Windows Precision touchpad. It has dedicated buttons. The keyboard deck is fairly stiff. We have low travel keys and during gaming sessions expect temperatures of the keys themselves in the mid 30s regardless of fan speed. Corsair's very own IQ software controls the keyboard RGB. It's incredibly in-depth. It'll make your head spin and they even put the RGBs inside the exhaust vents. The keys to the left to the main keyboard itself will allow brightness control of the keys up and down. We have two different macros, the record button which ties itself to the Xbox recording app, and the Lenovo Vantage button. The Lenovo Vantage software allows for custom macros. I like to use this for shadow play as well as being able to max out the fans at the push of a single button. Otherwise fan control is simple, either let it run on autopilot or max it out pressing FN and Q or Control shift one Inside is a convenient way to get system updates as well as switch to hybrid graphics, just know that you will be prompt to reboot should you select it. One thing I need to mention, because the macro keys on the left hand side pushes the keyboard itself to the right while keeping the trackpad centered, that means the actual keyboard is to the right and that's something a little different to get used to. Ergonomics on this are going to be a little strange at first, but more importantly, in situations like this, when I'm trying to hit the escape key, I'll hit the Lenovo Vantage software button, and this has taken a great deal of time to get used to, and I'm still not quite there yet. Next, let's take a look at the built-in webcam and microphone. The 720p webcam and built-in microphone are located at the bottom of the bezel. Should you decide to use it and type at the same time, the person will enjoy a nice healthy shot of your knuckles. Of course, you could stare at it like so. The laptop being one of the quietest at idle possible, you should have no fan noise interference. Maxing it out does sound like this. 
Thankfully, all of the fan's exhaust is behind the chassis, so it shouldn't be too irritating should you decide to want to use this webcam and game at the same time. Above that is the Full HD 144Hz IPS G-Sync panel, part number LGD05CF. Many have been reporting backlight bleed issues. I can confidently tell you that my sample today is fantastic. Post-color calibration came in at 97% standard RGB, 69% NTSC, and 75% Adobe RGB, right at 300 nits. In my opinion, where the Y740 really shines is on thermal and frame rate performance. The 2060 in here is no slouch. We're currently running BIOS 1.06, ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, GPU-Z reveals the GPU temperature limit of 87 degrees Celsius, and Lenovo honors that factory spec here. GPU wattage will pull between 75 and 81 watts. The max I ever saw was 92 watts under strenuous synthetic loads. When the CPU is loaded by itself, it will pull up to 60 watts, but when it is loaded in conjunction with the GPU, it will settle down to 45 watts. The average high temperatures of the CPU are around 80 degrees Celsius and the GPU at around 70 degrees Celsius. All tests done with the maximum fan speed used. Expect around 48 decibels with maximum fan speed. Battlefield 5 Ultra, around 80 FPS. Now you'll notice the wattage here at 45 watts. We are running completely stock. You'll see the frequency run around 3.4 on average. When you undervolt, you'll actually gain two or 300 megahertz, provided you are still under that same 45 watt load. Should you attempt to remove power limit throttling of this 2060, you can run it at around 0.7 volts at around 1300 megahertz. This will have little to no impact on frame rate, but overall your laptop will run even cooler than it did at stock. Apex Legends on Ultra averages 80 plus FPS, and with some mixed settings you should have no problem getting between 100 and 144 FPS. Fire Strike stock, a little over 15,000 points, and Port Royale, which is a ray tracing benchmark, a little bit over 3,000. The gaming fan acoustics on average when you're not using maximum fan speed are going to be between 43 and 45 decibels. On idle, 28 decibels. We are talking class leading for a gaming laptop. One of the quietest laptops to use day to day. Rarely do you ever hear the fans spool up for no reason at all. We have excellent idle temperatures in the 40s. This thing is near silent absolute acoustic perfection per the specs inside. One of my favorite features of this laptop actually. And then a few key features once inside the BIOS, you have your switchable graphics inside. You can also enable BIOS flashback. I always recommend enabling that straight away. And should the enthusiast out there want to try having a go disabling hyperthreading and just run six cores as they are, have at it. Before we wrap this up, let's have a listen to the audio performance from the Y740 and compare it to the Aero 15. All right, so there it is, folks. Tons of information about the new Lenovo Y740. So my final thoughts and conclusion is this. Thermally efficient, acoustically sound, the mullet of laptops, business in the front, party in the rear. This is a really good laptop, except when it's time to be a laptop. That power supply unit is massive. Do not overlook this. That battery size is way too small. Definitely do not overlook that. And furthermore, the keyboard is a little odd in that the macro keys being on the left and the keyboard itself being shifted to the right. I couldn't tell you how many times I was in a panic and hit the Lenovo Vantage button versus the escape key. This could take some getting used to. I'm confident that some will be able to do so, but I'm also certain some are going to have a tough time. So there are some strong pros and strong cons with the Lenovo Y740, and that's going to do it for now. Oh, don't cry. Don't cry. Look, look. All it needs is a bigger battery.